Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair, and this is one that I didn't think I would be doing. It's an Ingraham, and I recently repaired one of these that was very difficult for me. And once it was done, I really didn't think I wanted to work on another one. But this one caught my eye. I sort of considered it a mini mantel clock, and I'll compare it with the size of the one that I recently repaired, so you'll have an idea what I'm talking about. You can pretty much see how much smaller it is, and I thought that was kind of cool, so I figured I would give it a try. It does have its own issues. Let's put this back down here. Uh, the main one is that the power cord is, the plug is broken on it, so until I get a new plug attached, I won't know if it's running or not. Other than that, the main issue for me is the case is in very poor condition. A lot of scuffs, scratches, either a veneer or just the finish is badly worn off over here. It does have some nice decorative uh, carving on the bottom, and I'll see how best I can figure out how to restore the case as well. But first, I'm going to get it on my work table here and uh, start to take it apart. We'll take out the two screws, but first I have to remove the set knob. This plate should come right out now. And this is a very different looking clock from what I've been seeing. It has a coil and I do see a rotor in here. But I'll take a lot closer look at this before I proceed. And uh, I'll figure out which way to approach it. Seeing as how the connection that the wire is making here is pretty much intact, what I think I'll do is I'm going to cut off the broken plug, strip the insulation from the wire, attach a new plug, and plug it in, see if it works. So let me work on that. And once that's done, I'll continue. I've attached the plug, but before plugging it in, I want to check the continuity that there's no shorts in here anywhere. I'd hate to plug it in and have something burn out. So check it with my ohm meter. And the numbers flash when I touch the leads to the plug. We have an intact circuit. Okay, that looks good. We'll plug it in. And turn it on. And it is not running. Okay. Turn it off. So now I'll start opening it up, taking everything apart. The first thing I want to do is remove the rim, the glass, the hands, and the dial. So it appears as if these little metal tabs is what's securing the rim to this plate. I see, looks like three of them. I'll work on bending them out and seeing how easy it is to get this whole thing off. I'll work on that and then we'll continue. I've bent away the three tabs and we'll see how easy it is to get this rim off. No, that wasn't bad at all. So we'll put the glass in the room aside for now. Next, I have to determine how these hands are attached, whether it's threaded on or a friction grip. So I'll take a closer look at that before trying to remove them. And then we'll continue. 
it looks to me as if it's a friction grip on the second hand. And I think if I just carefully try to pry it up, it may come off easily. Not all that easy, but it is moving. There we go. Okay. What I am seeing is that the dial has tabs locking it into this plate here. So to keep everything in the right position, I'm going to note where the 12 is on the back of this plate. Let's leave that there. Okay, next I'll look to remove these hands the same way. wasn't bad and for this one I'll slip some cardboard under here to protect the dial from my screwdriver and I want to scratch it up well, that's not bad at all quite easy Okay, now what I am seeing here, you can see the gears, this is the rotor, and I think the best way to proceed, probably take either this plate off first or this, I got to take a closer look at it before we continue, figure out which way I want to approach it. The two nuts over here is what's holding the coil in, so I don't want to take those apart. On this side, these four nuts here is going to get this plate off. This looks very similar to the design that I've seen in some old Hammond clocks, especially with this recessed divot that the nuts fit into. When I look at it sideways, there's a second plate underneath this one kind of sandwiching the gears between this plate. This one is riveted on, so I don't think that's going to come off. What I'm hoping happens is when I get these four screws off, this plate comes off and this one in here will come off. That way I'll be able to get to the gears. What I did notice in here that was almost kind of funny is there's a screw wedged in here. Right there you can see it. I don't know where it came from. I don't see any screws missing or any similar screws. I don't know if that ended up being stuck in there when this thing was manufactured but definitely something unusual. Anyway, I'm going to work on getting these four screws out next, and then we'll continue from there. I've got three of them off. I'll take off the fourth one now. And there's also little washers, sort of a lock washer under here. We'll see how easy it is so lift this plate off of here now. Now well, it's not easy at all. There we go.
and we have these little washers underneath each opening. This one's stuck here. Okay, I'm going to take a closer look to see about getting this off. I don't want to disturb the gears here. I also may want to take a few photos of it so I know how everything looks when I want to put it back together. Before trying to remove this plate though, one unusual thing I'm seeing is this is the set knob. And when I push it up to engage the gear to, to turn them, the gears start to turn. And then it kind of gets, it jams. And the spindle, the stem is turning, but the gear is not. If I go the other way, same thing happens. It turns a little bit and then stops. And if I try to just continue to turn it with my finger, I reach a point where it's it's just stuck. So these gears in here, I think, are jammed or frozen or I don't know what. But anyway, I'm going to go back to trying to get this top plate off. Another thing I've noticed, I'm starting to free this plate up. It's starting to lift on a couple of spots here, here a little bit. The third one is moving, but one is, is still stuck quite tight. However, when I start to press on it, what I'm realizing is on the other side, this, what I consider a flywheel type of a disc, this is made out of Bakelite, which is just a plastic. This is very fragile. If I should lean on this and break that, I'm sure that the clock will become unrepairable. So to protect that, what I'm going to do is just put a piece of tape over this. So as I'm handling it, when I fingers go on the tape, it'll tell me to back off a little bit. Anyway, back to trying to free up this last one that's kind of still quite tight. I've got them all free. I have this washer off. Okay, as I lift this plate, I see some of the gears are rising up with it, so I have to get in there and hold them in place, which takes three hands actually, but I need to work on that and get it off and then I'll come back and let you see how it looks. As you can see, I've got the top plate off. On the back of this one, I have three gears. I'm not sure yet if they're riveted on here or if I'm going to be able to separate them. And over here, this is my set knob stem and a couple of gears here and I'm going to just try to figure out how they come off and take a few photos of all these positions. Once I know what's going on I'll continue. Another thing I've noticed the gears on this plate turn quite freely and when I remove these two gears both of them turn freely this gear here is what's coming up out of the rotor. This is not budging. So what we have here is a frozen rotor, which means I'm going to have to figure a way to get this out, try to get into it so I can clean out the old oil, which is probably all gunked up and dried out, uh, clean it out and relubricate it and hopefully get the rotor to work. So let me take another look to figure out how I'm going to get that out. But before I do, I just want to show you how these gears come apart. These two are kind of simple. This is here, and then this one. What's on the other plate is a bit more unusual. This top one comes out. The one underneath it is just a flat disc. And then what I think is a spring, it's bent, curved, which sits on top of this small gear. And then I have these two. This one is riveted in place. This one wants to come out, but I don't think it's going to because of how this is riveted. Anyway, let me get back to work figuring out how to get this plate apart. What I've come up with is to get the rotor out of here, I have to get these two plates apart. 
and there's no screws on this side but on this side these large nuts I think can be removed and these two is what holds the coil in place and I think these four will let me get these two plates apart so I'll start working on that and then we'll continue I took off one the others I've loosened it's pretty simple to get this off and this what I'm going to do now is very carefully and very slowly try to separate these two plates this plate from what's basically the coil assembly so that might take a bit of time once I have them separated I'll continue I think I've just about got it off I'll see if I can show it to you There we go. This sits over the rotor. Let's remove this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a couple of photos of this before I take anything else apart. Then I'll continue. So, next, I'll lift this off. Looks like the whole rotor is coming with it. And I see a little nut underneath this. I don't know if you can see it there, that's holding this plate in. I need to somehow get this and this off from the rotor. So I gotta take a closer look and then we'll come back. Okay, what I'm seeing is I don't have any kind of a tool that's gonna to get in here and loosen that nut, which would get this whole, I think, gear and little plate off. But on this side, there's a screw, and around this output gear, there's a small nut. And I'm going to try to undo them. I don't know if that's going to open up the rotor. This screw turns pretty easily. I'll see if I can undo this nut, because I think that's what's keeping this attached to the front. I won't be able to pull it apart. So let me try to loosen that and then we'll continue. What I've been able to do is remove the screw. I loosened the nut on here, but if that's supposed to help in getting this rotor apart, that's not happening. It's really snug. Almost looks like it's soldered together. What I normally would do for a rotor like this is on the side, there's either a plug or I make a small hole to clean out the old oil and once you've done that because of a hole over here you can just shake out the excess what I'm noticing is taking this screw out I actually can, can see the gears in here so in theory I might be able to put some of my I use liquid wrench to free up the old oil I just don't know how easy it'll be to shake out all of it because you need to remove it all before using regular oil so uh, let me see if that's going to work or if I may have to resort to drilling a small hole here What I've decided to do is I'm going to fill this up with my liquid wrench, let it soak for 24 hours. Uh, the rotor here, I can't budge it, it's frozen. Uh, I will try to then shake out as much of it as I can. Uh, following that, I add three in one oil, and if I have to do that two or three times in order to clean out all of the uh, liquid wrench, then that's what I'll do. But any other handling of this, I really think I'll end up breaking this disc. If I try to clamp this and then drill a small hole, it's the odds are too good that I'll break this. And at that point, I probably won't be able to fix it at all. So I'm going to go ahead with my liquid wrench, fill this up and let it soak for the 24 hours. That looks like it filled up pretty quick. It's 
I'll give this a few shakes and see if I can work more of this into it and then just let let it be. I was able to get a lot more of the liquid wrench into here and it's been soaking now for about 24 hours and what I'm happy to note is that the output gear freely turns and if I give it a spin it makes this little disc rotate. So that's encouraging. I'll work on now in removing the liquid wrench from here, shaking out as much of it as I can, then filling it up with three in one oil and letting it sit for another 24 hours. I have filled and drained this with three in one oil twice now. And as a result, the output gear is now turning quite freely. And I'm feeling pretty good that this rotor should function properly. So what I want to do next is clean up and lubricate the gears. And then reassemble everything between the plates here. Hook the rotor back up, plug it in, and see if it actually works. Uh, I'll start working on all that, and then we'll continue. What I've also done is I placed the screw back in the rotor. The only reason I can see for having this at all is to make it easy to re-lubricate this if the need should arise. However, you still need to totally disassemble the entire clock in order to do that. I've cleaned and lubricated all the gears, the plates. I used some synthetic clock oil on the stems of the gears, also in the pivot holes where they enter into the plates and I'm going to reassemble everything and once everything's back together uh, then we'll continue. I'm going to try to show as much of the reassembly as I can and I'm going to start by putting the rotor back into this plate. Next I'll reseat this coil assembly. Okay, now I just have to secure it with the, the two nuts, the tall ones here and the short ones here. And I'll do that and then we'll continue. I've seated the four nuts and tightened them up. And if I've done everything correctly, the rotor should be functioning now. So let me plug it in, turn it on, and it's working. You can see the disc spinning. The next step now is going to be to reattach the gears onto this other plate and uh, connect everything together. I'll work on that and again show you as much of it as I can. I've already repositioned these gears as they came off of this plate. I just have to seat it through here. And then place this over this. Okay, that went on pretty easy. There we go. Now I just have to secure everything by putting this plate back over it. Let me work on that and then we'll come back. I've seated and attached the plate. Everything's tight here. And before proceeding, I want to just double check that it's working properly. So I'm going to seat the minute hand. Turn it on. And it's running. And I would like to be able to keep the original power cord. It's cloth covered, gives it an original look, but 
it does have a lot of areas where it's fraying and I don't think it's the safest uh, thing to, to continue with. So I'm going to remove it and I'll reattach a new power cord to it. And I'm gonna work on that next. I've reattached a new power cord. What I wanna do next is clean up the dial, polish the brass rim and clean the glass and then I'll be ready to reassemble the clock. I cleaned up the glass, the dial, and polished the brass rim. First I have to seat the dial. There's a couple of tabs here that I have to try to bend in a little just to secure it. Okay. Next, I have to seat the hands. I start with the hour hand. And you want to point it to the 12. And then the minute hand also on the 12. And the second hand. Now the glass goes back in the rim and the rim goes back over the dial. And then I just have to bend the tabs back in again here. And there you have it. The mechanism is secured and working. The next step is going to be, before I put this into the case, is how I want to restore it. And it's pretty beat up, but I'm going to start by just give it a good cleaning and then go over it with my uh, Howard's Restore Finish and the Feed and Wax, wax Polish. So that'll take some time, I'll work on that and once it's done, I'll continue. Just to show a little of what I'm doing, to clean the wood, I use Bruce's wood floor cleaner. I find it works quite well on these old cases. And I'll just spray a little on it. And you can see how much dirt comes off of it. I'm gonna do that over the whole case and then figure out ways to improve the finish. I decided to try something different and I'll try to show you what it was. I experimented on the back of the case first with my Howard's Restore finish. And if you can see this area where it's all scratched, I went over this with the Restore finish and it didn't really blend in. It's still quite light over here. A similar scratched area was over here. And although you can still see it, the product that I used to kind of blend that in is this. The Midwax Minwax wood finish. It's a golden oak color. And I think this is giving it a better look. So I'm going to rub the stain over the entire case. And uh, once that sets up, I'll determine how I want to go ahead and polish it. So let me get to work on that. I've gone over the case with the stain and it's darkened it up considerably more than what it was before. Not quite 100%, still a little bit lighter over here but I do think it looks better. And I think instead of going over this with some wax polish, I'm gonna try giving it a couple of coats of polyurethane. So let me get to work on that. I've gone over it with the polyurethane. I think it came out looking pretty good. It has a nice shine to it. And that should hold up pretty well. What I'm gonna work on next is inserting the mechanism back into the case. I've passed the wire from the mechanism through the case, through the back plate, 
Let me set the mechanism in the case. Now, I just have to secure the plate to the back of it and we'll be set to give it a test run. The back plate is on. I've got it plugged in. Let me turn it on. And it's running. So there you have it, an Ingraham, what I'm referring to as a mini mantle clock. I believe it was built somewhere in the 1940s. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I have several others that uh, you can feel free to check out. And your comments and questions are always welcome. That pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.